So this is a Pierre foam mock-up block. This is set up for a six volt bell housing, so that would make it a later 289 or 302. The problem is I need to mock up a 351 Windsor. The deck height on the 351 block is significantly taller. I wish there was a way I could wave a magic wand and turn this 302 block into a 351 block with the correct deck height. Wow, that worked really well. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So here we have a mock block. If you've watched any kind of automotive repair shows where they're building cars on a regular basis, you will see these lightweight foam blocks for the purpose of mock-up. And this is an outstanding tool to have, but it is also really, really expensive. And even worse is you have to pay that premium for every single block. Everything I do is small block Ford. The problem is there are two sizes of small block Ford. You have the 302 289 size, and you also have the 351 Windsor. And the 351 Windsor has a taller deck height. So I figured, okay, that's easy enough to fix. Maybe if I can make a spacer to go between the block and the heads, I can convert this 302 289 mock block into a 351 mock block. So the first thing I had to find was a block that did not have the heads already cast on it. And a lot of the ones that were available, the heads were already cast. But I did find this, part number 3029, that had the heads removable. Once I had that, I did some internet research and I found out that the deck height difference between a standard 302 block and a 351 block is about 1.3 inches. Now, there is some variation. Some blocks have less deck height. Some blocks have a little more deck height. So it is definitely plus or minus in that 1.3. I also took measurements on my 351 block and confirmed that, yes, Somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.3 inches will give me the height that I needed. My plan is to use foam core board, cut it out in the shape of the heads, glue it together, and create a spacer to build up the deck height on this block. All right, let's start tracing this. There we have it, the rough shape. I don't need to get all these little nooks and crannies and, and get it down exactly. I just need to have it close. So with a pile of blanks cut, the only thing that's left to do is to put the holes in them. And that's really gonna be a pretty simple process. I have a transfer punch that we're gonna run down the hole in this head. And then once I get that done, I'm simply going to take this over to the drill press and use a step drill bit to drill them out. So you can see easily dimpled, easily centerable with the step drill bit. So I'm faced with a dilemma. Turns out that the 1.3 inches that I found online as the increased deck height is fairly accurate. And the 
0.2 inches that this foam core board is roughly per piece means that six thicknesses, which is what I have currently in between, is not enough and seven thicknesses is too much. And you can tell that because of where the holes line up. Right now, I've got the holes too far in, like the studs. The distance between the studs is not far enough. But if I add a seventh piece to each one, the distance between the studs is too far. My solution is to use some eighth inch paneling material. And that's gonna allow me to do two things. One, it will properly space the studs, the distance that they need to be. And two, it's actually gonna allow me to utilize the holes in the block that are lower down for mounting the heads. When I cut the foam pieces, you actually saw me use the foam heads as the pattern. But to cut this piece, I really do need to use an actual head. And the main reason for that is these holes for the head bolts. The only two holes that are actually drilled or cast into the foam heads are this one and this one. And I want to add a couple of bolts here and here to help hold my adapters in place and to help so that it's equally compressed. The nice thing is that using this hard material, I'll put it in the middle of the stack and that will give me that opportunity to mount bolts in that will hold up against this, compress the bottom three layers, three, four layers, and then I'll cut reliefs in the upper layers of foam cord for the head. hard to see on camera but I have marked it out and I'm going to cut the lines that I've drawn with a reciprocating saw. No point in showing you that. So as before I'm going to use a transfer punch to punch these, get everything set the way I want it. I've actually flipped the piece over so that it's enamel side down. I did that because the enamel's more likely to crack from the pressure from the transfer punch, whereas this more wooden side is more likely to dent. Now, I'm sure you've seen all this. You saw me cut out this rough shape and you saw me cut out the rough shape in the foam core boards. And you're probably thinking that is such a janky solution. Rest assured, when it's all said and done, it's going to look fairly cleaned up. Once I get everything glued together, I'm actually going to take it over to the belt sander and clean up all these edges. So let's go ahead and make some transfers. Oh, that's going to work good. Let's get those drilled out. After my latest test fit, six pieces of foam core and one piece of paneling results in a really nice fit. If you look right there, you can see the studs coming up through and they are relatively centered. My plan is to laminate this all together with some glue. I'm actually going to go four layers of foam core the paneling, and then two more layers of foam core. And the reason for that is the bottom holes on these fake heads have not been drilled out. And by doing two layers of foam core on the outside, I will be able to recess the bolts and still fit the heads down firmly. So here we have my block extenders. They're still rough. We're going to clean them up. You can see that I cut out an area so that I can put a bolt head to hold down into those lower holes in the block. And now it's time to start gluing.
So here's what I'm gonna do to glue my block extenders together. I've got some 3M spray glue and I'm going to spray this side, spray this side, and begin fitting it all together. Then once I have it fit together, the glue should be holding well enough that I can actually pull the bolts off. And then I will actually set a head on top of it to help compress it and give it an even fit. My spray glue is running out and so I'm having to pretty much keep it level to be able to get glue to come out of it. It's not pretty, but we got it done. And that should provide enough weight to help it cure consistently and compressed all the way across. Looks like I need to go to the hardware store and buy some more glue, and then I can do the other one. All right, now we're starting to get somewhere, and this is starting to look less like arts and crafts and something a little more professional. I took this over to the bench sander, and I cleaned up the edges. Now, they're not perfect. Cutting the foam core board was probably the most challenging part. I used a razor blade, but it tended to to kind of make rough edges and, and peel away. And sometimes you would lose a little bit of the inner core, the inner foam. And so because of that, I mean, I could have continued to sand on this and get it down smooth, but it's really not that big a deal. By comparison, you can see that we are way better off. And you can see I actually took off quite a bit of material. Got it all sanded down, same thing on this one. And it really doesn't matter if these end up being a little smaller than the head because they're not sealing anything. All they're doing is extending the deck height of the block and creating a spacer. So now that I have this one cleaned up, we're going to take this one over to the sander and do the same thing on it. When I was sanding it, I took lots of light passes. I went a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other. And part of the reason I did that is the bottom edge, this little bit of, of paper would kind of peel up. So by flipping it over and then taking a really quick light pass, it kind of helped clean that up. But ultimately, it's just going to clean them up a little bit and make them look a little more professional. One thing that's super important, and I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Taking this over to the sander. Styrofoam has, I don't know, you put it in a landfill, I think they say it takes 500 years to break down or something along those lines. So you really don't want this in your lungs because if you get it in your lungs, it's going to be there for the rest of your life. So make sure you wear adequate protection. I put on my respirator as I was working this material. So here we have my block extenders. Painted Ford blue to kind of match the block, but not really. We've got six layers of foam core board and one layer of paneling in between. It's that layer of paneling that allowed me to drill the bottom three holes. And then I also actually glued washers into place just to help protect this. I wanted to minimize the wear and tear on these basically since they're just foam board that's been glued together. Overall, I am really happy with it. The only thing that I didn't like is the area where I cut out the recesses. And if I was going to make another set, I actually would have put a sanding roll in my die grinder. And I would have gone in and cleaned those edges up. The foam core board does not cut very well, but sanding it really gives you a nice, well, relatively smooth edge. The time that I spent on my benchtop sander really cleaned up the outside and gave me a fairly nice stack of boards. And I think had I taken the two top pieces, bolted them together, and then come in here with a die grinder, I could have easily cleaned up these holes as well 
but the best part is they're gonna get the job done. So using these block extenders is really pretty simple. All I have to do is use three 7 16 inch bolts to attach the extenders to the block itself. Once I have those installed, it's as simple as using two slightly longer bolts than what came with my block to hold the heads in place. If you notice, I'm tightening the bolts down with a roller wheel instead of an actual ratchet. And the reason for that is this is all foam. I don't want to over compress the block extenders and I don't want to damage the block or the heads. As with a lot of DIY projects, I learned a lot in this one. If I was going to do it again, there are some things I would do differently, but what I've created gets the job done. I'm very happy with the results. And I think this is a viable option for those that are going to be dealing with both the 302 and the 351. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments section and I would love to answer them for you. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't, you're not going to see new projects that I'm working on as soon as they come up. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.